the simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank Part 56. Cleaning the last few parts and fitting the smoke box saddle. I know that this image doesn't look very good and contrary to what you may be thinking, I am not cleaning the parts using raw sewage. This is actually cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner and for paint removal and general grime removal I do recycle it but now I think it's time to buy some new because I've reached the bottom of my recycled thinners can. The last few remaining parts have been in this mixture for a couple of days so the paint should just fall off. In this clip I'm working on the front of one of the crossheads and I'm using my Proxon motor tool fitted with a wire brush. An immediate health and safety warning when you do jobs like this you must wear eye protection because it's not just the particles of old paint that fly everywhere you're in danger of being hit by a stainless steel bristle. Cleaning small parts with a rotary wire brush is fairly difficult but it can be made a lot easier by using one of these. And no, it's not a medieval torture device. This is a Proxon rotary tool holder and you just clamp it to your bench. Very simple. Once the unit is firmly clamped to the bench, all you need to do is tighten a pinch bolt which holds the tool in place. And suddenly the whole job is revolutionised. You can now use both hands to hold the metal part that you're removing the paint from so it's not going to dance all over the place. Here I'm cleaning one of the valve gear parts. This is a return crank. The drill makes a bit more noise when it's held down to the bench with the clamp unit. And in this clip I'm also using the motor tool with the speed turned down. It doesn't need to run at a million miles an hour. If currently you use Proxon motor tools, then this clamp unit is an essential fitting. The Proxon motor tool that I'm using for this job is rechargeable battery powered. I have a couple more that plug into power supplies with a cable and I'm really tempted to use one of the wired power supply type to make a permanent addition to the workbench. What is this piece of putrescence I hear you ask? It's one of four brake blocks connected to a brake hanger. Originally I painted these while they were on the chassis and then I thought better of it so I removed them and this is how they're coming out of the cellulose thinners mixture. Thankfully this was a really quick job, the paint literally fell off the part and in no time at all I took the entire thing back to bare metal. And the total time for this job, cleaning up every one of the parts, took about an hour, probably less. The longer you leave the painted parts in cellulose thinners, the quicker and easier it is to remove the paint. And now all the parts look like this. With the exception of the return cranks, I will be using etch primer first and then painting them black. As I showed in the previous episode, the wire brush fitted to the Proxon motor tool is very useful for this job, cleaning up the guide bars for the crosshead. Unfortunately, the more that you use this small wire brush, the worse it gets, because all the bristles start to roll together into a spiral. So after cleaning the other crosshead guide bar at the other side and all the painted parts, I thought it would be a good idea to change it so that it looks like this. These tools are available in packs from China and they're very cheap and they're okay. The only type that I don't like are the ones where the bristles stick out at 90 degrees. This type of rotary wire brush was also quite useful. It didn't shed its bristles too badly and it gave a very good finish on the steel bars. And once again, don't forget when you use these things, you really must wear eye protection. In no time at all, this really cleaned up the guide bars to a very high standard. But all things must come to an end. It's time to fit the smoke box saddle now. The first thing to do when I pressed it in position was to find out where the holes are and whether the holes in the chassis lined up with the saddle. And when they did, that meant that the saddle was in the correct position. Before I can bolt the smoke box saddle in place on the chassis, I need to remove the steam chest cover. I started off using a socket and that made short work of the job. Until I came to the last two nuts. I had to remove the last two outer nuts so I could get my socket on the inner ones. And could I find the right size spanner in my box of spanners? Well, no. Nothing seemed to fit. 
so in the end I called in the cavalry and as always I used my barco spanner. The problem is with a lot of BA nuts and bolts you can get them with different size heads. And because of this often when you look at something like a 4BA bolt it doesn't follow that the nut is a 4BA nut. So you get your 4BA spanner and it doesn't fit and after trying about 6 I gave it up as a bad job. The next part of the job requires some very limited ultraviolence in the way of a soft hammer or a copper faced hammer this one is and with a few gentle taps it loosened the cover and here I'm lifting the cover up being very careful not to rip the gasket. And not unsurprisingly inside the steam chest is a slide valve. This next part of the process is really important. The slide valve covers the ports. So whilst working in this area with small nuts and bolts I need to make sure that none of them fall into the ports. What I'm doing at the moment is finding the position for the saddle by using the scriber. I thought this was going to be a really simple job. Obviously the smoke box saddle is threaded so all I need to do is just screw in some 6BA bolts and here's one of them in one of the holes. I decided to use some dome head brass bolts. These will be perfectly adequate. I was able to push this bolt into position all the way through, so obviously the holes in the smoke box saddle casting are not threaded. Even though the slide valve is in the correct position to stop anything from going into the ports, I thought it would be wise to pack around it with a cloth, because at this stage if I drop a very small 6BA nut or bolt into the steam chest accidentally and it falls into the ports, then I do have a bit of a problem. A little bit of swarf and some grit in there won't make any difference at all, it is after all a steam engine, but a 6BA bolt could be a problem. In this clip I'm holding a 6BA nut in a pair of forceps, and you can see how very small it is. I found this to be the best way to align the nut on the bolt. All I then had to do is use my screwdriver to tighten the bolt. Some viewers may say, why use brass bolts and why not use hexagon steel bolts? Well, because it's easier and you can't see these brass bolts anyway once the running boards are fitted. And I'm sure that 12 6BA brass bolts are more than strong enough to hold this saddle onto the chassis. Unless of course I drop it out of an aeroplane, but I don't really intend doing that. And with the thoughts of a simplex locomotive falling from the heavens, that's the end of this video. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.